Teachers are carrying 
Ronald Karen and Santanese Jones in McDonough, Georgia. Good morning, family. Oh, how we miss you here today. Janetta Elliott, Roy and Sandra Johnson, Melissa Lawson, Marilyn Mariah Manuel, Thelma McGee Carver, Lakeisha and Thea Bradley and family in Dallas, Priscilla White, Sister Angela Venable and family in Baton Rouge. Good to see Sister Robin Calhoun in the audience today. Charles Calhoun, Star Crawford, Mary Jane and Pierre Larry, Jasmine Smith, Mae Johnson in Houston, Texas, Pastor Larry Ellis, Pastor Ronnie Correll, Pastor Henry L. Davis, Jr., Mrs. Weta Davis in Detroit, Kirk and Jackie Ford Jackson, Marla Starrett, Don Rulis, Walter, Louise, Lynette, and Raquel Crawley, Kellen Jones, Hope Richard in East Palo Alto, Sandra McNeil, we are praying for you today, Stephanie Gaines in San Francisco, Susan Vargas Rinconis, Diane Miles in New Orleans, Marvin Mickey, Sadie Tinsley, Carrie Creamer, Sister Brenda Ireland and family in Milwaukee. Good morning, Church on the Rock is praying for you. Brother Robert Griffin in Sacramento, Pastor Donald L. Parson in Chicago, Ariel Crawford, 90-year-old Deacon Wilbur Butler, Archie Robinson in Petersburg, Virginia, Jacqueline Thomas Dorsett in Los Banos, the family of Eli Pettius, Robert and Lina Altman in San Francisco, Rhonda Eller, Jacqueline Marshall. We're praying for Pastor Dan Botavara and his family and the loss of his wife, Evelyn, who went home to be with the Lord on Friday. Church on the Rock is praying for you. Tom and Donna Arnold, all of those who are fighting COVID-19, all of those who have lost their jobs, all frontline essential workers, our President Joseph R. Biden, we are praying for all of you today. Now, if you're hurting this morning, I want you to lay your hand where you're hurting. And together, we're going to talk to the Lord. Yes, sir. You get all doubt out of your mind. Get all fear out of your mind. And let's believe that God will heal you, will come to your rescue, and will make everything all right. All wise and almighty God, thy little servant, whom thou hast called by thy name, comes again into thy holy presence with these, your people. Thank you, God, for all of the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you, God. For blessings that we didn't even ask you for, but that you gave to us anyway. Thank you for last night's rest and, and this morning's rising. We're grateful that our names were on the wake-up list. Lord, while we slept and slumbered, you did not allow thieves to break in, nor fire to break out. But early this morning, you touched us with the finger of your love, allowed us to open our eyes and see a brand new day, one that we've never seen before, nor will we ever see again. We have the activities of our limbs, the flow of blood running warm in our veins. 
sins, uh, the regulation of our heartbeat. Uh, we could get up and dress ourselves, uh, get in the car and come on out uh, to the house of prayer uh, to give you praise, uh, glory, and honor uh, that you're so worthy of. Uh, oh, uh, our Father, uh, we realize it's not because we've been so good uh, or so perfect, uh, but it's only by your grace. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Oh, our Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would look on us right now with an eye of pity and a heart of tender mercy. For we have sinned against you in thought, word, and in deed. Uh, Father, we are sorry for our sins uh, and we plead the blood of Jesus uh, all over them uh, right now. Uh, forgive us, our Father, uh, and help us to do better uh, and be better uh, from this moment forward. Uh, now, our Father, you told us uh, to pray one for another. Uh, and our prayer list is long today, uh, but we're not telling you what you don't already know. Uh, but in obedience to your word, uh, you said ask uh, and it shall be given. Uh, seek uh, and ye shall find. Uh, knock uh, and the door shall be opened. Uh, we pray our Father uh, for our brothers and sisters uh, that have said pray for me. Uh, wherever they are, uh, would you look on them uh, right now? Uh, Brother Roy Johnson needs you, Lord. Uh, would you look in his hospital room? Uh, Rosemary needs you uh, as she lies uh, in a coma. Uh, Lord, look on Pastor Dan right now uh, as you call the love of his life home uh, to be with you. Uh, dry the tears uh, from his eyes. Uh, I call you for my mother right now. Uh, Lord, uh, have mercy. Uh, oh, uh, are standing uh, in the need uh, of a miracle. Uh, and you are uh, a miracle working God. Uh, Father, uh, there is unrest all over the world. Uh, war in Afghanistan. Uh, we can't trust the North Koreans. Uh, China won't behave. Uh, but Lord, uh, you still uh, have the world uh, in the palm uh, of your hand. We pray for the leaders of the nation. We pray for President Joe Biden. That you give him mercy. That you give him wisdom. That you give him grace. In the name of Jesus. We pray for our children. That are going back to school. We pray for our soldiers. That are defending the nation. We pray for teachers. And doctors. And nurses. Oh Lord. Would you please have mercy now, our Father, as we gather in this place to give you glory and honor. We need a word from heaven above. Speak through the man of God. Words of life, words of hope, words of encouragement. For we need it in times like these. And oh Lord, help us to praise your name. Help us to clap our hands. Help us to pat our feet. Help us to rock from side to side. But help us to give you glory that you're worthy of. For you brought us through another week. COVID free. We had food on the table. We had gas in our car. Some of us had jobs to go to. You've been Now, our Father, somebody watching is not feeling well. Would you be a doctor? Would you be a medicine? Would you be an anesthesia? Help them to be all right. We said we'd ask. Now, Lord, it's in your hands. And we believe everything is going to be all right. We give you praise in advance because we believe. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, 
and we say thank you in advance. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. Come on and put your hands together, church. I think God is worthy of it. Come on and put your hands together. Let's give the Lord some praise in this place.
too better than that. Let's put our hands together. It's amazing. Amazing. When I look out and see your face, it's amazing. So amazing. It's amazing. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to have church, so I'm going to give him that. He's amazing. Amazing. Today is traditionally Family and Friends Day in our church. And uh, for the last 30 years, we have been doing this on the last Sunday of August. And uh, because of the pandemic and all that has gone around, uh, it's changed so much uh, in our society. And I wanted to keep some things the same. This year, however, I uh, was led by the Spirit of the Lord to ask a longtime friend and actually a neighbor. Uh, Minister Hill lives right here in the Evergreen Silver Creek Valley. And uh, I really just found out recently uh, that he was a minister for almost 11 years. And I didn't know he's been, you know, the last thing I remember, he was singing in the choir at True Rhyme 30 plus years ago. So uh, the Lord put it on my heart when I found out to ask him to come and deliver God's word today. And so I think you are in for a treat wherever you are today. Uh, Minister Mosey Hill is a Christian man who is a member of the Maranatha Christian Center here in San Jose. Prior to joining Maranatha uh, in the year 2000, he and his family were members where we met at the True Vine Baptist Church back on 21st Street in the good old days under Pastor Lewis Jones here in San Jose. And although being in church since his early childhood days in Seaside, California, uh, Minister Mosey rededicated his life to God after moving here to Silicon Valley and has been serving the Lord for the past 30 years. Before being licensed to minister in 2010, he served as a deacon as well as a member of several auxiliaries including the usher board with his wife, hospitality, and the choir, and is currently on the praise and worship team. Though retired now, uh, he worked for 33 years in the refuse and recycling industry. He says that he's still looking for employment if anyone listening is hiring. Mosey and his lovely, lovely wife, Miss Carla, were together for 36 years until God promoted her to her heavenly reward this past February. Their marriage exemplified God principles and godly love. They mentored many young couples in their marriages by providing a safe and comfortable environment to openly share their real life issues. There are three children and 11 grandchildren don't look that bad for his age, amen, that make up the portion of the Hill family tree. I'm looking at his son all the way in the back, and he looks like his father spit him out of his mouth, even with his mask on. Now, we're glad to see some of them, the family members, in the audience today. I'm just grateful to say that for many years, uh, uh, Minister Mosey and his wife Carla have always tried to encourage us here at Church on the Rock reminding us that even though you're small, you are mighty, and we are grateful for their friendship and their encouragement. And so today, after we sing our hymn of preparation, which is on the last page of your bulletin, uh, uh, the hymn of preparation will understand it better by and by. The next voice you will hear will be that of Minister Mosey Hill. Shall we stand together as we sing this a cappella? so you have to do some work. So wherever you are watching, join us. Uh, oh, my.
seat. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you may be watching this stream. Amen. Amen. Give an honor to God and to Pastor Moore, to you, my fellow believers in Christ. Again, my name is Minister Mosey Hill, and as the pastor said, I come from Maranatha Christian Center, where the pastor, Dr. Tyrone Partee, is the pastor there. But like he said, I've been there for since 2000, um, and I was licensed as a minister by then the pastor and founder, okay. but now retired, the doctor, Reverend Tony Williams. And though he's retired, he's not at 100% right now, so in your prayer time, if you would just remember to call out his name, come on, okay. Pastor Tony, say that with me. Yes. Pastor Tony, that God would meet every single one of his needs, amen? Yes. I just want to take another moment to publicly thank Church on the Rock for your constant prayers yeah. for me and my family yeah. through the hardship I was and still am enduring over these past few years. Every bit of prayer was indeed appreciated. And I know that it was the prayers of the righteous, come on somebody, that availed it much. Yeah. Come on. That strengthened me able to stand here before you today. Pastor Moore, sir, I want to thank you also for just allotting me this time uh, and for sharing your pulpit. I know that this position, that this place of reaching souls is a sacred place and very personal to you. And so for you to apportion it with me today, I count it as an honor and a privilege. And I do not take it lightly at all because I know that with it, comes a responsibility to preach and to teach the word of God Amen. and to do so like it is written, come on somebody, just like it's done here every Sunday. And how appropriate that I would be speaking to you this morning on Family and Friends Day. Mm. My, uh, my wife and I were always treated like family here and always received friendly, amen. amen. And to my family, my daughter, my son, my grandkids, Grace, amen. to my church family, to all of those who are supporting me by watching online, I just wanna say I appreciate y'all and I love you as well, amen? Amen, amen. amen. Well, with that, there is a word from the Lord this morning. I won't be before you long, the pastor has given me a time frame, and so I will be obedient as much as the Spirit will allow. Amen. So, turn with me. Come on, somebody, tap if you are so inclined, or slide your screen if you must, to Hebrews, the sixth chapter, starting at verse 13. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise this morning. I know that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. If you're there, here we go. Read with me. This is the King James Version. You can stand if you're so inclined. Verse 13. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessings I will bless you, and multiply and I will multiply you. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Yes. For men indeed swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is for them to end all dispute. Thus God determined to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, yes. we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. Verse 19, and this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both yes. sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus having become high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Okay. 
May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. You may be seated and also to make it applicable in our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day, God. And we thank you for this is the day in which you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. God, I pray now that you would use me for your divine purpose. I pray that I would decrease, that you may increase. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, amen and amen. Come on, somebody, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. what is your hope built on? What is your hope built on? Now look at somebody else and say, part two. Part two. Amen, part two. Now, if you were here last week, or if you had a chance to review the pastor's message, then you will know that he spoke about what is your hope built on and what and how are you holding on to your hope. So even though I have been preparing my message for today, months now, I was sitting back there where I normally sit, just being overwhelmed by the Spirit as I listened. I had to go home and amend my word so that I can include some of your word so that it could be a continuation of God's word from last week. Come on, somebody. Only God knew that this was happening. Only God had it planned. Listen, there is so much in these scriptures that we just read along that if I were to try to cover them all in detail it would not be enough to time to do so thoroughly so I'm just going to touch on some and go a little bit deeper on others amen okay. but I invite you I implore you that in your own personal devotional time with God to study what God is saying to you with this word. Yeah. Right. The message here for you may be different from those that are sitting next to you and then those that are sitting across from you. Yeah. Allow for me to set the stage for you, if I may, to give you a clearer picture of what was going on at the time that this scripture was written, who wrote it, and to whom it was written to. Right. At the time that this book was written, the Jewish Christians was undergoing a fierce persecution, both physically and socially, from the ritual abiding Jews and the Romans alike. Right. The author of Hebrews is unknown, mm -hmm. for throughout it, no persons or persons are named. Right. Some Bible scholars suggest the likes of Paul, uh -huh. and even Luke is a possibility. Yet again, no name or names are given. Right. But on four separate occasions in his writing of letters, the Apostle Paul refers to Timothy as brother. Right. And in chapter 13 of Hebrews, this writer makes the same reference of Timothy as brother. Right. So you can see why there would be that assumption of Paul. Right. Also, we can only surmise that it was written before the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, which was around 70 AD, because there's no mention made of the annihilation of the temple in this book. All right, all right. Lastly, it is believed that it was written for the second generation Christians, but more importantly, it was written for all believers in Christ, like you and I today. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. I need to hear your amens if you're with me. Amen. So in verse 13, the writer made a promise. The writer is talking about the promise made to Abraham way back in Genesis. And it says that because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. All right. So I just need to touch on this just a little bit. And, and the point here is that God, come on somebody, being who he is, made a promise, swore to himself regarding that promise, and the promise was yet fulfilled. All right. Come on, I know some of you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And verse 15, it says that after he, Abraham, mm -hmm. patiently endured, yeah. he attained the promise. Yeah. Come on, now the promise was made good to him after 
after he had persevered. Yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody. Anybody persevering this morning? Yes, sir. And the lesson here is that there is always an interval, yeah. a gap. All right. And sometimes a long one yeah. between the promise and the manifestation. Yeah. Come on, this time of waiting is a trying time for all people, yeah. and especially yeah. believers. Yeah. Yeah. And God is watching to see, come on, who has the patience mm. to endure. All right, all right. Is there anyone here waiting on something today? Yeah. I know you are. I know you got to be. If you're watching right now, I know you're waiting on something from God. Yeah. yeah. Verse 16, it says, Indeed, men swear by the greater for an oath, and a confirmation is for them to end all dispute. But the King James Version says to end all strife. Yeah. 17, thus God determined to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things, which is as impossible for God to lie, yeah. we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope that is before us. Yeah. Now it says two things are immutable. Now immutable means not capable nor susceptible to change. So God's promises are not capable or inclined to change, but they are indeed fixed and inflexible. Right. There are two things that are listed here. Come on, somebody. Two things that are listed here is that number one, that God cannot lie. Right. Now, aren't you glad that God cannot lie? Amen. Especially for all the promises that he has Amen. for you and I. Amen. Come on, say what promises, preacher? What promises, preacher? What promises? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you what promises that he has. All he right. says that he would never leave you nor forsake you. That is not a lie. He promised to give you rest. All of you who are weary and heavy laden, that is not a lie. He promises to be our refuge and our strength, our ever-present help in trouble. Is there anyone in trouble this morning? That is not a lie. Come on, somebody. He promises to be with you always till the very end of the age. That is not a lie. He promises to love those who love him. And for those who are seeking him, diligently will find him. Yeah, yeah. Is there anyone looking for a savior today? Yeah. That is not a lie. Oh, 55 and, Isaiah 55 and 3 says he was bruised and chastised and by his stripes we are healed. Yeah. Anybody in need of a healing today? Yeah. That is not a lie. Yeah. He promises eternal life through salvation. That yeah. is not a lie. Yeah. 1 John 1 and 9, mm -hmm. he promises to, if we confess our sins, yes. that he is faithful to forgive yes. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is not a lie. Yes. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares yes. the Lord. Yes. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a, come on somebody, to give you a hope. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Plans to give you a, Okay, thank you. And a future. Now, I could just go on and on because the Bible is full of his promises. And aren't you glad that the promises of salvation, mercy, forgiveness of sins, spiritual prosperity are all promises that are made to us by God who can never lie. Yeah. And he is the very God that we serve today. Yeah. Come on, somebody. You ought to say amen on that. Yeah. Yeah. Two immutable things, it says. And the second one is, is that we might have strong consolation. Now, strong consolation, another word for consolation is support. The support that God has is strong enough to encourage us in our toughest trials, amen. amen, who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope mm. set before us. Yeah, yeah. What is the hope that is set before us? Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. Before we can answer that question, we must understand what hope is. All right. Webster defines hope as to cherish a desire with anticipation, a desire of wanting something to happen or wanting something 
to be true. Yeah. This desire comes along with an expectation of attainment or fulfillment, yeah. along with the confidence of success. And lastly, but not completely, hope comes with the belief that is centered on someone or something. So in hearing these different degrees and aspects of hope, it is safe to say that our hope lies, yeah. come on somebody, in many different areas, but mostly it lies in what is most pressing in our lives yeah. right, now. right now. These right different now. degrees of hope stem from the smaller things in life to the absolute most important thing in our lives. Yeah. Things that we hope for earlier, come on somebody, uh, may change to what your hope may be right. today. Yeah. Let me yeah. give you an yeah. example. In the beginning of every basketball season, your hope may be that the Warriors would win yet again another championship. But as the season progresses, your hope may very well be right now, next year. As our situation changes, our hope is bound to change. Our hope in God should never change. I said our hope in God should never change. Which is not to say that the things that we hope for of God may differ. The things that I hope for of God are not the same things that you hope for of God because our situation and our circumstances are not the same. Come on, somebody. Our situation and our circumstances are not the same. What is the same, however, is the God whom we serve is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the greater that we all should have is the greater hope of salvation. Yeah. The hope for eternal life, but not only for ourselves, but for everyone that we know and love and for everyone that we meet. Uh -huh. For this is God's desire. Yeah. And it concerns me when you think about the people who have no relationship yeah. with Jesus yeah. Christ or those who profess that they don't believe yeah. in God. Pastor mentioned this last week. They believe that this is it. Right. They believe that this is all that there is. Come on. Come on. And it, you know, it, 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 it hurts me. Mm. It hurts me that they believe that. Mm. We should pray that the lost yeah. be found yeah. in Jesus Christ. Yeah. What is your hope built on? Oh. Part two. Come oh. on, somebody. Oh. Part two. Verse 19, it says, it sums it up this way, that the hope that we have as an anchor yeah. of the soul, both sure and steadfast, yeah. which enters the presence behind the veil. Yeah. Now, there's a couple things here, and I'm going to jump to the veil, and I'm going to come back come on, to the yeah. anchor now. Now, I know y'all learn this in Bible study, but in case you may not have, I'm going to say it. All right. In the Old Testament days, it was the law. All right. All right. That only the high priest mm -hmm. could go behind the veil yeah, that's right. and oh. enter the most holy place yeah. and there experience the presence of God and to do a sin offering of atonement yeah. for the people. Yeah. That yeah. was the law. Yeah. In the New Testament, in Hebrews 7, 19, it says the law made nothing perfect. Yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, there is a bringing in of a better hope. Yeah. Come on, somebody, yeah. a better and through which we draw near to God. Yeah. And this better hope that we have now allows all of us to be able to enter into God's presence. Come on, somebody. Yeah. No matter who we are, no matter where we're at, yeah. it allows us all to enter into his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this hope mm -hmm. is anchored in our soul, both yeah. sure and steadfast. Let me talk about the anchor here for a moment, All then right. I will be finished. All the right. material makeup of an anchor is as follows. It All is right. made up of a strong and heavy material or metal so that it is able to plunge through the depths of any waters, be it calm or turbulent, allowing it to reach the watery bottom. Yeah. The physical yeah. design yeah. of most anchors is that it has a hook yeah. on either end so that after it's made its way to the watery bottom, yeah. it attaches itself to those hooks and it secures a vessel above yeah. Yeah. what 
that it's attached to regardless of what's happening on the surface. So here we go. So if, so when your soul is anchored in the Lord and your hooks are attached to God and you secure yourself in Him, so regardless of the turmoil, regardless of the storm, regardless of what's happening on the surface, inside you are at peace. That's more inside things are calm. Our expectations of, of, of what we expect to happen, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let me go back. All right. Got excited. All right. Y'all pray for me. I got excited. All right. I meant to say was we are in this world as ships are at sea. All right. Liable to be tossed up and down and all around. Come on, somebody. In danger of being cast away. Yeah. Our souls represent these ships. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Now, our expectations and our wishes and our happiness, just to name a few, are the precious cargo in which these ships are carrying. Yeah, right. Our dreams and aspirations are the priceless goods that these vessels are loaded up with. And heaven is the harbor to which we yeah. sail. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Come on, that was an amen moment right there. So when you drive it down the road and you get that later, when you get that later at the dinner table, it's okay to shout and say amen. Yeah. Come on, somebody. The oppressions, the enticements, and the sufferings that we all encounter. They are the winds and the waves that threaten our shipwreck. Yes. We are in need of an anchor oh, to yeah. keep us sure and steady, yeah. or otherwise we are sailing in continual endangerment. Yeah. Yeah. We are destined for destruction. We are at risk of being ruined. And the gospel hope, come on somebody, is our anchor. So that when our stormy encounters happen in this chaotic world, we yeah. remain safe yeah. and steadfast. Yeah. Amen. Again, Pastor said this last week, gospel hope in Jesus Christ. Gospel hope, not gospel, we read it earlier, it means good news. Yeah. The good news of hope. Yeah. Hope in God and his sovereignty. That is our anchor. Come on, somebody. Sure and steadfast. Yeah. Listen. If Jesus said, peace, mm. be still. Yeah. In the midst of every one of your storms, you would have no need for an anchor. But God allows the storms and the waves to happen. Yeah. Yeah. He allows the gallows of life to happen yeah. so that you are able to develop your anchor. Come on, somebody. Yeah. What is your hope built on? What is your gospel hope built on? Yeah. Romans 5 and 5, it says, now hope, now hope mm -hmm. does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts yeah. by the Holy Spirit yeah. who has given, who has, who was given to us. Come on, somebody. Yeah. With everything that is going on in this world today, yeah, yeah. the pandemic, yeah. civil unrest around yeah. the world, financial stress, yeah. aren't you glad that there is a hope that does not disappoint yeah. and that gives us an opportunity yeah. to face whatever life can throw our way yeah. day by day? Yeah. Come on, somebody, listen. Yeah. Deep inside all of us, mm -hmm. God has placed a spirit that refuses to be broken. Yeah. We yeah. call this hope. Hope. Yeah. Hope. Yeah. Come on, somebody. In spite of everything that I've been going through, yeah. in spite of everything that's happened to me, I refuse to be broken. Yeah. I have hope. hope. I refuse to be broken. What about you? Yeah. Do you have hope today? Yeah. Do you have hope? Come on, turn to somebody. this come from? My Lord, my Lord. What is a hope like this built on? Mm. It is built yes. on our faith yes. in Jesus Christ. Come yes, on, sir. Hebrews 11 and 1. Yes, sir. Faith, faith. is a substance That's right. of things what? That's right. Hope things Lord. what? Hope come on. And the evidence of things not seen. Uh -huh. Faith, it comes from knowing that Jesus died 
for our sins Hallelujah. so that we may have a right yeah. to eternal life. Yeah. By faith, By we faith. understand this. Yeah. By faith, we believe this. Yeah. This hope through faith, uh -huh. come on somebody, uh -huh. is only attainable by taking a trip yeah. to Calvary's cross. Praise 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 I need to take a trip to Calvary's yeah. mountain this morning. I said this faith, yeah. this, faith this faith, it comes from knowing that Jesus died for you yeah. and he died for me. Yeah. He died that we might have a right yeah. to eternal life. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody. And though he died, yeah. though he died, though they laid him yeah. in the tomb uh -huh. on the third day, yeah. I said it was on that third day, yeah. he got up, he got up, he got up, yeah. he got up with all power, yeah. all power. Yes, sir. I said all power yeah. in his hands. Yeah. Come on, somebody. The very that I spoke about earlier was 60 feet long, mm. 30 feet oh. wide, and as thick yeah. as a man's hand. Yeah. That separated the holy place from mm. the most holies of holies mm -hmm. was ripped, torn yeah. from top to bottom, yeah. 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 signifying the end of an old practice yeah. and ushering in a new way oh, to oh, renew oh, with oh, God, yeah. allowing everyone somebody that means you and I yeah. direct access to the Father yeah. establishing our hope. Thank you Jesus for access to the yeah. Father. Thank you, Thank you Jesus yeah. for hope. Yeah. Ask your neighbor what is your hope built on? Yeah. Amen. What is your hope built on and where is that hope anchored? Mm. Only you can answer those questions for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Come on somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Only you yeah. can answer those questions yeah. for yourself. Yeah. Well, I'm done, sir. Pastor's going to come with the remainder of the service, but before he comes, I just want to do a verse of a song. Amen? Do it. Hallelujah. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Yeah, yeah. Still the hope that lies within is reassured. Yeah. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shores, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't cease, and just in case the winds keep on blowing in my life, yeah, yeah. my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Come on. The
Everyone got their soul anchor. Everybody here got their soul anchor. You may be watching right now, and life for you has not been what you think it ought to be. You've been flowing to and fro. You haven't settled down. You don't have an anchor to build your life on. Yes, Today sir. we offer you Jesus. Yes, sir. Jesus is the one you can tie your life down to. Jesus is the one you can, you can set some roots down and you can grow and be the man or woman that he wants you to be. Yes, but it's your choice. It's up to you. The minister gave us so many scriptures. God has not forgotten you. He's got a plan for your life. He knows what he's doing if yes. you'll turn your life over yes. to him. But the choice is yours. If you desire to make Jesus your choice, it's very simple. All you have to do is talk to him. There, there are no fancy words. There, 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 there's no, nothing you have to do or get or have. All you have to do is have a sincere heart. Yes, God. And just say the words, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I want you to live in me and I want to live in you. I don't want to be the same anymore, but I want you to change me. And make me what you want me to be. Because I want to go to heaven when I die. And I want you to help me live while I'm on this earth. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, if that is your desire today. If you pray the prayer or something similar to that. Give us a call at area code 408-532-ROCK. Or go to our website at Church on the Rock Baptist and send us a message. Send us a note. Somebody will get back with you. And together we will pray. And if you're in the Silicon Valley, we'll help you get in a good, strong Christian church. Or wherever you are today, if not, we'll help you find a good, strong church where you can grow, glow, and go for Jesus. But don't let this moment pass you by. What is your hope? built on. Yes, sir. Some of you have built your hope on your job and your job has kicked you to the curb. Some of you have built your hope on money and your money's gotten funny. You change your strength. Some of you have built your hope on the relationship with your significant other and they got up one day and walked out the door and now you don't know what to do. Drugs don't satisfy. Liquor don't stay with you. Sex is not what it ought to be for you. I offer you Jesus. And he's waiting on you right now. Will you come to him? Will you let him be that anchor in your life? Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise, everybody. Can we do that? Oh, y'all are playing patty cake. Don't do that. I said give God some praise. Give him a standing ovation if he's worthy of it. If God has done anything, for you, give God a standing ovation. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. It's offering time here at Church on the Rock, and we've made it so easy for you to give today through your electronic apps of Zelle Pay, Cash, App, or PayPal. If you're on uh, Facebook Live at the top of the screen, there is an app button. You can press it. It will take you straight to PayPal. Uh, or you can go to Zelle Pay or Cash App. All you have to do is dial our phone number, 408-532-7625. We're also on the Givelify app. You can search for Church on the Rock Baptist. You'll find a picture of our sanctuary there in the background. You can give that way. Or you can go to our website at www.churchontherockbaptist.com. Hit the giving button, follow the instructions, or you may mail your gift to Church on the Rock, Post Office Box 730341, San Jose, California, 95. One seven three. Thank you in advance for what you're going to do for God through the ministry of Church on the Rock today. We know that he's never going to let you outgive him. So expect your blessing back. Expect your miracle. And don't forget to give God the praise. Well, until next time, same place, same time. 
We invite you to join us each and every Sunday morning or wherever you choose to worship at whatever time here on Facebook Live and YouTube. Don't you give up. Don't you give in. We know God will answer prayer. So you stay on the battlefield until God calls you home. I am on.